Sir Gerald Kaufman. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, <clears throat> what my right honourable friend, the member for Morley and Outwood, has said about the attacks on the strength of the police and cuts in police budgets particularly affects us in Greater Manchester, where we have an absolutely excellent local police service which will be severely damaged by what the government is proposing. I, however, wish this afternoon to concentrate on Clause 151 of the Bill, which has been smuggled into the Bill to fulfil a Conservative election pledge made in a full-page advertisement in the Jewish Chronicle during the general election, namely the change in the administration of universal jurisdiction in this country. There is no need whatever to change the law. To obtain an arrest warrant for a suspected war criminal, it's essential and necessary to surmount a very high hurdle indeed, and that high hurdle is rarely surmounted. Such applications are made rarely and they're granted even more rarely. This change in the law would never have come about if it were not for the case of Tsipi Livni, the war criminal daughter of a terrorist father who was scared off coming to this country because of the danger of an arrest warrant being issued for her. Tsipi Livni was jointly responsible for the slaughter in Gaza in Operation Cast Lead in which 1,400 people were killed, including 300 children, in a war in which 14 Israelis were killed, some by friendly fire. It's bizarre that a major change in our criminal justice system is being made at the demand of one of the most discredited regimes in the world. Will the Honourable Member give way? Yes, of course. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful to the Honourable Member for that. But he specifically uh, identifies uh, uh, Tippi Livni, and he says about such accusations which have been levelled against her. But I'm sure he will agree, as Foreign Minister, Livni would not have had either direct or ultimate command responsibility for any of the atrocities that he alleges. Will he now concede that that is incorrect, what he has just told the House? Of course not, I wouldn't. Sipi Livni is a war criminal, and what's more, she issued a vocal and extreme statement supporting the attack on the Gaza flotilla. She is not a person who is wanted in this country, and without this change in the law, she would not dare to come to this country. The, the, Israeli, the Israeli administration, as I say, is one, of the, is one of the most discredited regimes in the world. It has persisted in committing war crimes right through to the lethal attack on Ga the Gaza flotilla. On May I'll give way to the honourable gentleman in a moment. Uh, uh, on May the 31st, it's a country which breaches international law and the Geneva Con order, order, please. Honourable gentleman should know better. From a sanitary position, I don't want a debate going on across the chamber. If people want to intervene, do so in the correct manner. Sir Gerald Kaufman. Uh, the, the, the fact is that Israel breaches international law and the Geneva Convention every single day. It has just snubbed the President of the United States by refusing to halt the illegal building of settlements which itself is a contravention of international law. I'll give way to the Honourable Gentleman. I thank the Honourable Gentleman for giving way, but I have to say... He, I, I thank the Honourable Gentleman for giving way, but I have to say his uh, hatred for Israel knows no bounds. The, what, from what um, the Honourable Gentleman is saying, it explains exactly why this uh, universal okay. jurisdiction yes. needs to be changed, because it is being used by a political football yeah, 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 with yeah, people yeah. like the Honourable Gentleman who have As hidden agendas. There would have been no proposal to change this law if Tsipi Livni had not been scared away from coming to this country after committing appalling war crimes against the people of Gaza. It's as simple and as plain as that. Now, I will go on for a moment now, if I may. Uh, as I say, the Israelis have just snubbed the President of the United States by refusing to halt the illegal building of settlements and the Israeli regime uses its powers of arrest without charge arbitrarily. One member of the Israeli Knesset has been scared away, well two actually because the Deputy Prime Minister was scared away as well, 
was scared away because of this law. 30 members of the Palestine National Council are currently held by the Israelis without any charge. Not a threat of arrest, but an actual arrest. Last month, when I was in Jerusalem, I visited three members of the Palestine National Council who are taking refuge against arbitrary arrest by the Israeli police with the International Red Cross in Jerusalem. I met and heard testimony of young Palestinian children who were assaulted by Israeli police and they showed us their scars and their bruises as a result of the arbitrary and illegal way in which the Israeli police treat Palestinians, including Palestinian children. When we had a meeting during our visit in Amman with the Foreign Minister of Jordan, he told us how he had to offer diplomatic shelter to the President of Palestine because when they were driving along in succession, the President of Palestine was continually halted at Israeli checkpoints while he, as an overseas uh, minister, was not halted in the same way. For all of these crimes and many more, the Israelis are answerable to no one. Now, one of the few sanctions on these crimes is to be removed. Israeli politicians will, as a result of this change in the law, literally be allowed to get away with murder. And this is coming, Mr Deputy Speaker, at a time when the ground is shifting. As I say, this pledge was made in this full page advertisement in the Jewish Chronicle in order to get Jewish votes in the recent general election. But there is an upheaval taking place now in the Jewish community as a result of which the across-the-board support for anything an Israeli government does is no longer available. Well, my right honourable friend... Yes, of course, I'll give way. I'm Just very I grateful that the, my right honourable friend referred to the general election and how, or what comments people made in that. Does he recall what position every single Liberal Democrat MP took before the general election and during the general election on this matter? I am indeed well aware of what my honourable friend says because I used to sit in the House week after week after week at business questions when the present deputy leader of the House rose every week without fail to say how heinous and how unacceptable it would be for the then Labour government to change the law and how the Liberal Democrats would be totally opposed to any such change. And, like the cuts in police numbers, we shall have an obligation to remind the electors of Oldham, East and Saddleworth about the broken uh, 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 Liberal Democrat pledge of 3,000 more police on the streets and the broken Liberal Democrat pledge to oppose to the broken Liberal Democrat pledge to oppose any change in the law on universal jurisdiction. These things will not go. These things will not go by unnoticed. If the honourable gentleman will allow me, I'll proceed a little, and if I still have time, I'll give way to him. So. But as I say, an upheaval is taking place in the Jewish community. The attitudes of leading Jews who have been vocal champions of Israel are becoming deeply critical of this Israeli government. One leading Jew, one of the, uh, one of the most active and vocal in support of Israel, ha has accused the present Israeli government as being in the process of turning Israel into an apartheid state. And as for the Liberal, Dem uh, Liberal Democrats, as my honourable friend, the member for Ronda, has pointed out, their hypocrisy on so many matters, but since we're debating this one on this one, is limited. As I say, week after week, their spokesman rose vehemently opposed to, to any change in the law, a change in the law for which he will vote last night just as Liberal Democrats voted last week for blatant breaches in their election pledges. I say this, Mr Deputy Speaker, whatever the change in the law that this government is bringing in for the most craven reasons, Sipi Livni and her ilk 
will remain unwelcome in this country. What, worry, what worries me, Mr Deputy Speaker, is that if we do not have a valid and operable legal sanction which now exists, but which this bill would repeal, is that without the legal deterrent which this bill removes, disapproval of the presence in this country of Livni, Netanyahu and their cronies will take forms of which I and many others will deplore. And of course I'll give way to the Honourable Gentleman. I'm grateful. Isn't the fact that uh, the Vice Gentleman is at the extreme, not only in his views about Israel, which many of us consider abhorrent, but also in view of the fact that um, both the front benches have expressed support for this measure. Isn't it the fact that it's interesting he's spent the time using this uh, bill as a vehicle to display his, um, in, his political views rather than an issue of justice yes, of which yes, this bill is? Would he ask the question, does he agree, does he agree that um, arrest warrants should be issued when there is insufficient ev evidence to justify a prosecution? Because that is what is the heart of this matter of justice, not his own views about politics. The Honourable Gentleman may wish the Honourable Gentleman may wish to behave like a creep to his front bench, but I wasn't, elect I wasn't elected to Parliament to be a creep to my front bench. I was elected to Parliament to speak on my, uh, on my constituents, and indeed I persuaded the previous Prime Minister to abandon this change in the law. I went to see him and I persuaded him that it was mistaken, and he did not proceed with it. If my front bench doesn't want to agree with me, that's its business. I state a view which I have stated consistently in this House for very many years, and I shall continue to do so, because it is the Israelis who are in trouble. It is the Israelis who are turning themselves into a pariah state. It is the Israelis who will be overcome by the change in demographic figure under which they will be outnumbered by the Palestinians, and this government is being an accomplice to what the Israelis are doing. God forgive them.